E.ON gaining 1.9%, Mitsubishi up by 1.6%. Financial stocks are heading higher. Goldman Sachs reporting a smaller loss than some analysts had forecast. Mitsubishi UFJ up nearly 4%. Now, Mitsubishi UFJ is paying $280 million for Citigroup's Japanese Trust Banking Unit, which is making money. Nikko City Trust made a $1.7 million profit in the six months through September. Bernie, back to you. Okay, Mike, uh, well, get those gains going. Come on, you don't get news much better than this. You've got to take it and run with it when you get days like this. Otherwise, <clears throat> those others will come back a lot worse. In the land of smiles, they are now grouping, <clears throat> trying to come up with a viable uh, government. The new Thai leader, of course, anointed within the uh, lawmaking uh, body, uh, the opposition le uh, Democrat leader, uh, Kun Abbasid uh, Vejajeev, uh, started working on his cabinet lineup, uh, apparently still waiting for an official decree from King Bhumipan to install him as the 27th Prime Minister, just a matter of time, presumably, but uh, inherit something of a poison chalice, of course, with all the work ahead to fix the economy, which was paralyzed for the better part of two weeks with the airport shut down, and uh, who knows whether money which is left will ever come back. Our next guest correctly predicted the nomination of the new Premier, Andrew Stott, CLSA Head of Thai Research, is with us on the program today. Andrew, uh, you were spot on. Hats off to you. Now what? <laughs> now comes the hard work, right? I mean, there's a yeah. lot of work ahead, and it isn't going to be easy. The one thing I would say is that they're probably not going to face as much opposition as what people think. I think a lot of people are worried that there's going to be counterattacks by the red shirts or by Taksin's group. But I think given the, 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 the situation in Thailand and globally, it, it, these guys are basically going to probably have a chance to get right on to um, getting things done. Uh, what about the, uh, the violent protests, the throwing of rocks and, and all that? There is a very, very disgruntled, uh, of course, uh, constituency, which, was, uh, st which is still pro-toxin. Uh, are, they, are they just going to fade quietly into the sunset? Well, I think, you know, my, my feeling is that this group, uh, there's a small part of this group that's obviously going to be vocal, just like we saw the small part of the PAD that was very vocal. Um, and so there will be, you know, constantly be pressure being put on. But it's a, it's a much smaller group of people than what we saw at the PAD as far as the action that these guys are taking. So, uh, yes, at the point of transfer of power, of course, there's this, you know, violence and, you know, frustration. But it's not widespread. What happens now in I mean, the I economy? Think the thing, what is the... Bernie, Bernie, what, what, mm -hmm. Bernie ahead, one, of the you think, that one of the things I think is important to, to realize is that this is, this is a, a, a milestone for two reasons. Number one... This is the first time that the Democrats have gotten power since 2001. Taxon has had it since that time. Milestone number two is the first time the Democrats ever, ever made an appeal to the people of the Northeast. By taking a faction away from Taxon, the Naywin faction, they basically are now obliging themselves to start listening to and providing some benefit to the people in the Northeast of Thailand. So if they're smart, they will use that to basically try to calm those supporters of Taxon down and give them something. Okay. Uh, you're still taking a very risk-averse approach to Thailand. Uh, you're modeling 70% in cash and then the other 30% uh, divvied up wherever. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's hard to argue that Thailand's going to be booming anytime soon because even though we've got political settlement, number one, we've got foreign investment coming out of the world and going back home. So that's causing uh, money to come out. And it's unlikely people are going to be rushing into any emerging markets with money right now. The second thing is, of course, we hurt ourselves with the closure of the airport. And so with that closure, there's a significant amount of damage that will start feeding through over the next couple of months, which could bring you know, uh, GDP growth into negative territory in the first quarter of next year. Mm -hmm. uh, is the, would it be smarter to punt the bot just for ease of access and clarity and, and liquidity? And which way? Yeah, I mean, I think the bot... Yeah, the bot is strengthening, and I think the bot has ultimately is relatively strong compared to other currencies around the region. We saw the blowout in Korean currency, and we saw the blowout in the Indonesian currency. And in both cases, I would argue that those were hot markets. Those were popular markets over the last year or two. So there was a lot of money in the markets. Thailand has one. On the one hand, it's a disadvantage. We didn't get any money over the last couple of years. But it's an advantage that there's not a lot of money running out of Thailand. So the currency is in relatively good position. Okay. Give me an idea. Is there a common theme running through your, uh, the 30% allocation in a very, very small handful 
of uh, ultra low beta stocks? Are we talking about uh, very, very defensive, uh, you know, just a consumer plays with a base, uh, with, with a base case uh, to their name and maybe not a lot of excitement on the upside? Yeah. Yeah, if we were to group Thai stocks that are liquid, there's you know, 20 or 30 stocks that people could invest in. I would group them into three groups. One is what I would call defensive, low beta, quality companies. The second one is relatively good quality, but higher betas, betas and cyclicals. And then we've got the high risk stocks. I wouldn't be in high risk stocks myself at this point. And I would say probably 70% would be in these stable, low beta stocks. And about 30% in higher risk, but you know, quality cyclicals. And that's kind of the way I'd play it, because I, I do think that we, we will get a local, we're getting local um, follow through, but one of the nice th things that you see that's not so good for the market right now is that retail punters just don't have any power. Putting, they're not mm. putting any money in the market. It's really local mutual funds right now. Right. Well, one, one upside of all this mess, I was just checking the latest uh, hotel and air packages to Samui and Phuket. You can have those for a song, and I'm going to be there standing. <laughs> on those white sand beaches. Andrew Stott, CLSA. Next on the show, check on how the markets are swallowing the Fed rate cut. I'll bet you pretty darn good.